come to our first virtual and also abridged housing distribution ceremony. I'm happy to welcome all of you. I'm happy to welcome those joining us on social media. I will ask you now to stand for the national anthem and if you could remain standing for the prayer, please. <laughs> If you may please bow your heads. Almighty God, we thank you for this day that you have made and we rejoice together, Father, because we will have new home owners today. Father, today is a great day because we are able to allocate homes to many deserving families and individuals. We pray, Father, that our new homeowners will be a good example to their community by the care that they take of their home and the surroundings. We also pray that the neighborhood will continue to be safe so that children can play freely with their neighbors' children, relatives, and loved ones. We are thankful today for all those that made this day possible, from the clerk of works, project managers on the sites, the administrative staff, senior management, our board, the honorable minister, and others. Many people worked together to ensure that this development was ready for allocation. We pray that we will continue to have the resources to execute our national housing program, which ultimately benefits the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. And we know, Father, that as you supply our every need, as we do your will, these houses will continue to be built. We thank you, Father, for all that you do to our, for us on a daily basis, for your love, grace, and mercy to us all. Ladies and gentlemen, you may now be seated. Thank you. So welcome again, welcome to all those viewing on social media. I'm DK Noel, Corporate Communications Manager at the HDC, and we really are happy to uh, resume what we are mandated to do. So the last few months have been unprecedented for us all. The impact of this pandemic has caused us to make adjustments. As individuals, we even had to make adjustments to save lives, lives of our families. And as an organization, we too had to adjust. COVID-19 made us re-examine our processes and our, and our policies and how we execute our external communications campaigns. So today's event is an example of that, adjusting to the new normal by adopting new strategies to achieve our mandate. So we hope moving forward, most of our events will be virtual, will have some element uh, that will incorporate all the, the aspects of physical distancing and all the other health, health measures. So today we have 10 persons who will receive their documents, their allocation packages for homes in, in Lakeview and Hubertstown, both in the Point Fourteen area. And we will also have another 12 who will be at the San Fernando office. They were given pre-arranged times to collect their documents. This as, is really to ensure that there is some element of physical distancing and we uh, adhere to the protocols and those implemented by the Ministry of Health and other agencies. So as I said, we are in point 14. We are happy to be here at the Borough Corporation, at the Town Hall, in fact, live, and we are really happy to have with us His Worship, the Mayor of this Borough, His Worship Kennedy J Richards Jr. Uh, they also call him the first citizen. So ladies and gentlemen, let's warmly welcome our Mayor, please.
Good morning, all. Allow me to recognize the Honourable the Honourable Major General, retired at Mondelon, Member of Parliament for Point 14, and Minister of Housing and Urban Development, the Deputy Mayor, Oloman Salima Thomas, Ms. Simone Torn Mora, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Housing and Urban Development, Mr. Noel Garcia, the Chairman of Housing of the Housing Development Corporation, Mr. Brent Lyons, Managing Director of the Housing Development Corporation, new homeowners, members of the media, those following on Facebook, YouTube, and other social media platforms. The, the privilege is mine this morning to bring welcome remarks to everyone here. Firstly, let me say to the AGC, the Housing Development Corporation, that I'm really impressed with the direction that is, has gone in terms of the quality of homes being produced for the people of this country. I think they have been doing an excellent job in terms of creating quality homes for families in Trinidad and Tobago. All right, so thank you for that. Um, home ownership is something that you know you dream about. You know, going to school, you tell you get your education, get a job, get a family, I'm sorry, get a house and put your family in the house, put a white picket fence, get a dog. You know, it always has things that you, that you plan to do in life. Sometimes the plan doesn't work out the way you want it to work out. All right, but today you are here to set about your plans of home ownership and securing your family. Today is not about getting a house. Right? I know a lot of people say they want a HGC house, so give me a house. Right? Home ownership has responsibility attached to it. A simple thing as paying your mortgage on time, paying your bills, managing your resources. Those are things that you need to do when you are a home owner. Right? So today, the pleasure is mine to welcome you to um, the community up in Fortin for those who who, who lived outside of Point Fortin, or for those who are now getting a new relocation, whether it be Hubertstown or it be um, Lakeview, welcome to Point Fortin. I can tell you one thing about the Lakeview community. They are very much an organized and well thought out community. So you are not going into a community where there is war and fight and, and bacchanal. You are going into a community that the AGC build their house strategically, Right, one, they have a strong community council and they have rules and regulations in Lakeview. So I know that when you get your keys, the people of Lakeview will probably pay you a visit, welcome you, as I am welcoming you to Point Fortin today. And they will also oh, guide you as to the way the people of Lakeview has to behave. Right, so this is a great step for you, the people who are um, accepting homes today. This is an opportunity to, for you to plant shade for your children and plan for your future generations. Utilize it well. Pay your mortgage. Don't let nobody have to come back and take your house. Right? It is yours, but it also comes with a responsibility. And I am certain that once you handle your end of the bargain and your responsibility as an adult, then you would see your investment of a home Bear fruit for you. And with that, I say thank you. Your Worship, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, normally when we distribute homes for our communities, we realize soon after that some persons tend to forget the rules that they agreed to. They tend to forget the guidelines that they signed and that they agreed. So we have invited Idris Salim. He is a spoken word artist. He is going to communicate to our new homeowners in a creative way how they should behave, what they should do, what they shouldn't do, what their guidelines are. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to really, um, I'm really happy to warmly welcome Idris Salim. Like a good neighbor, Richard is here. Richard, a 42-year-old mechanic 
with a career well established, having passed approved key giving and moving, being new in point forting, of course, there's no losing. But when I mention you, why are the neighbors losing their minds and fuming? <clears throat> well, Richard, it have a way, bro. And it's not me, eh? it's the other neighbors that say so. The garbage truck does pass and stop on certain days, though. Garbage don't need to soak and kusume, no. LMA, I'm joking. But we, the friendly neighbors, was hoping you understand how much a, a problem the garbage disposal poses. Don't mean to poke my nose in, but rotten chicken does smell different from when it's frozen. And it might be my memory, eh? But me and once recall loving you look of fresh, fresh garbage juice running down the wall. To tell you the truth, we had a little meeting and we think you should team up and you can be the president of the monthly community cleanup. I know you better, so do better. <clears throat> like a good neighbor, Lisa is here. This is Lisa. Lisa got the much needed leg room with that new two bedroom. It seems like the right cards were played for you, or your mother prayed and prayed for you, or your good deeds paid for you. Anyway, Lisa, I'm merely here to say there's a call on line two and they say it's for you. <clears throat> well, Lisa, you ain't know the half. And you go maybe laugh. But just like the last person the neighbors sent me on their behalf. First of all, unfold your eyebrows right now. It can't be every morning you wake up on the wrong side, Lisa. These is the easiest people to live among. So why are they saying you is the hardest person to live alongside? You affluent in argument. You're taking offense, making no sense. Neighbors are unpaid security. What sense it make to make no friends? Quarantine in full effect. You quarreling behind masks. And if the flames die down, I don't know where you just find gas. Sometimes the neighbor throw a towel in, and 15 mi minutes later, you still quarreling. It have ways to deal with things if you're feeling like the way people dealing with you ain't feeling right. I know you better. So do better. When would neighbors be classified as good neighbors? Nobody asking you to invite your neighbor to share the fruits of your labor. Or that your obligation is rending never-ending favors. I do expect Christmas limes, carnival, jump ups, or may bazaars. But unfamiliarity breeds contempt, and familiarity breeds content. So, because you know your neighbors, you know who you are. There are usually, there is usually purity in community. How would the community fuse if I feud with you or you foolishly feud with me? Wouldn't that behavior be ugly? That wouldn't be neighborly of me. Let's all make the small effort to individually, so individually, we don't work really hard to hold ourselves in such a standard that the community will be held in a high regard. And whatever takes place, we ensure the community is a loving and safe place. I remember being raised on a diet of consideration. No one has the patent for patience. And we're just moving in, so we'll make this an amazing phase one. This is our neighborhood. And we are blessed in it, whether Muslim, Hindu, black, white, atheist, or Methodist. If we put the best in, I'm betting we'd bring out the best in it. Blessings one can't estimate, so don't set limits. Because as niceness not, it will just finish. Whether we take this as time of celebration or a time of relegation is really based on dedication to how well we could fuse our collective values and avoid maluse and denigration. It's just a big set of words to say live nice. And live right, like this community is, but without one flaw. And I leave you with this, my friends, in case you are unsure. Congratulations to every one of you as you leave with your new HDC keys to your front door. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, that was Idris Salim. Idris Salim is really one of our country's uh, most... Uh, known and most reputable uh, spoken word artists. And really he enforced what we at the agency like to underscore. We like our communities to be model communities. We know that our residents could really be model residents and we really want Lakeview. We want Hubertstown and we want all the other communities that we intend to present over the next few weeks to be model communities. So it is indeed my pleasure to invite the Honorable Major General Edmund Dillon, Minister of Housing and Urban Development, and the MP for Point Fourteen to deliver remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, I know we're few in numbers, but we could warmly welcome the Honourable Minister. Thank you. 
Your Worship, Councillor Kennedy Richards, the Mayor of Point Fortin, Deputy Mayor of Point Fortin, Mrs. Salome Thomas, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development, Ms. Simon Thorn Mora, Mr. Brent Lyons, Managing Director of the Housing Development Corporation, new homeowners, members of the media, those who are listening on the World Wide Web and Facebook and other social media. Indeed, a very pleasant good morning to you all. Today is certainly one of the day that the Lord has made, and I'm sure, including our recipients today, we certainly all will enjoy it. It's always a good pleasure for me when we distribute homes to the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. Well, it gives me a sense that we are achieving a mandate set out by the government that satisfies one of the basic needs of our people, which is shelter. So it's always a pleasure for me at these distributions. But I think more importantly today, it is even more pleasurable for me because the distribution has taken place in my own constituency, the constituency that I love, the constituency of Point Fortin, a constituency that I have spent the last four years and eight months dedicating and devoting my time and energy to its development and improvement by providing this community with some long-lasting demands, such as the Point Fortin Hospital, the Mahaika Oval, the Point Fortin Fire Station, the Tisha Community Center, providing lighting of recreational spaces in places such as Fullerton, Buenos Aires, Captival, community refurbishment in areas such as Gonzales Guapo, in New Village, and a number of different structures, a number of different efforts for the satisfaction of the people of the constituency of Point Fortin. I know that they are satisfied, and I'm sure they will continue to receive the benefits of the government and the people of Trinidad and Tobago. This morning, we are about to distribute home or units. The 83, 83 units have been identified for allocations to 15 in Hubertstown and 68 in Lakeview. But of course, given the measures of COVID, we cannot by any degree have all the recipients here this morning. So as you're aware, we are certainly in the midst of COVID-19. As of today, I think there are almost 4.8 million cases identified throughout the world. There are roughly 185, 190 countries involved and roughly 385,000 people have died so far. So this pandemic, has, as it's called, has touched almost every corner of the world. We are fortunate today that the government of Trinidad and Tobago, led by the Honorable Dr. Keith Christopher Rowley, have certainly taken deep and ingrained measures to ensure the safety of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And I want to congratulate the government. I want to congratulate this government for all the measures that it has adopted with respect to treating with the COVID-19 measures. But I must also congratulate in particular the Minister of Health and his officers for the human service that they have been doing in controlling this virus. Without any doubt, we have seen the Minister of Health and his officers created almost a parallel health system to treat with the COVID situation. One that has been very successful to the effect where we have been called or we have been nominated as number one in the world. But we cannot afford to be careless at this point in time. As a society and as a people, we have to observe, even while we will leave some of the measures and so on, we have to continue to observe the measures outlined by the Ministry of Health and his officials because that is what will keep us safe. But more importantly, it is in fact our individual responsibility to take care of ourselves given this COVID-19 pandemic. The government has also instituted a number of public health regulations, such as the definition of essential services, closure of businesses which are slowly being allowed to operate on a phased basis, des designated opening hours for businesses and so on, wearing of masks that we must do, of course, social gathering or social distances, as it is now called, it's part of the light. So in light of this, the state's apparatus has been working assiduously to bring a measures of relief to citizens and assist them in surviving these trying times. But again, I enforce that is something that we have an individual responsibility. Government cannot enforce attitudes and behaviors that must come from within us. And so we also want to appreciate the work being done by the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Social Development and Family Affairs, Ministry of Local Government and, and, so, and Small Enterprises, 
All these ministries working together in the whole of government to post continue to bring relief to the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. The public service has always been identified as an essential service, and this government has committed to continue offering services even though we are in trying times. While some agencies are on the front line, providing much needed service and financial support, others are quick, quietly ensuring the nation affairs are being conducted in a seamless manner to keep this country on an even keel while we negotiate these uncharted waters. One such state ministry is in fact the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development and its agencies, the HDC in particular for today's exercise. I want to singularly congratulate the chairman, the managing director, the employees and staff of the HDC for the kind of service that they continue to do in providing much needed shelter to the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. And they do so today by adhering to all the necessary protocols outlined by our medical professionals to ensure the safety of those attending the ceremony. However, due to stay-at-home restrictions, not all beneficiaries allocated have been processed as yet. But we expect this process to, to speed up in a while as the government will leave some of our measures to ensure as quickly as possible, as quickly as humanly possible, ensure that all those who have been allocated receive the necessary packages and their keys to enter in their cherished homes. Today's event is a symbolic representation of those who will receive packages for housing unit in these two developments. In so doing, only a token number of persons will be presented with a license to occupy and rental agreements, while the others will be notified as to when they can collect their packages at the offices of the HDC. This development comprises a matrix of family units with a combination of two and three bedroom single family, townhouses and duplex units with one to two and a half bedrooms, bathrooms. Since coming into office in 2015, this administration has initiated and improved policies and programs to facilitate development in the public housing program in order to engender hope and aspiration to those who look to the government to provide public housing solutions. As such, ladies and gentlemen, we have returned the HEC to its original moorings. By lowering the monthly income to 25,000, it was 45,000 before that, we intend to capture a greater percentage of individuals within that brackets to ensure those qualifying applications can access affordable mortgages units to the Toronto Bigo Mortgage Finance revised 2% and 5% mortgage facilities. For the 82% of applications or applicants on the ministry's database who are unable to access a mortgage, the AGC has, is able to provide rent-to-own and rent -to facilities in some of its developments. It is quite clear that the initiatives we have introduced thus far have borne some fruit. And it tells us that we, in the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development, and the AGC in particular, we are in fact on the right track in increasing the nation's affordable housing stock. Since assuming office in 2015, we have distributed over 3,000 housing units to qualifying applicants, which means the correlated number of families are now living in their own homes. This has been no easy feat by any stretch of the imagination. Considering our economic circumstances, but we have every intention of continuing to distribute the housing units once they are completed and the contractors hand them over to the HDC. This government will continue to be informed and guided by the housing needs of our low to middle income citizens and will introduce timely innovative strategies to address the shortfalls in our supply chain. Understandably, declining oil prices in the past five years have precipitated a situation in which we can no longer rely solely on state resources to provide housing accommodation for every family who may need such. One of the strategies we have employed to close the gap between demand and supply was to actively engage and incentivize private sector investors, developers, small and medium-sized contracting firms. Through the public-private partnership arrangements, we have been able to procure 605 additional housing units through five new housing projects valued at over $1 billion. Under this program, 
private investors have provided, own finance, designed, build arrangement. So we have been able to harness what we consider spare resources in the private sector. I wish publicly to thank those investors and developers who answered our call and partnered with us to the redound of our potential beneficiaries. I urge others to join with us to increase the nation's public stock, as this will create much needed opportunities within our economic landscape. This would allow persons earning between 14,000 and one to 25,000 to access these properties, which are valued between $750,000 to $1.5 million with a TTMF 5% mortgage facility. Persons earning up to $14,000 can access properties less than $750,000 utilizing TTMF's 2% mortgage interest rate. In addition, the Public-Private Partnership and Housing Construction Incentive Programs, the HEC has also undertaken to construct housing projects using state funds under the Public Sector Investment Program. These include nine stalled housing development post-2010 elections, seven unfinished projects inherited post-2015 elections, and seven new housing starts as of 2016. We trust we will be able to start implementing our latest initiative, the Small and Medium Contractors Housing Initiative. Once the steatome restrictions are lifted, the, I'm sure constructions will start soon. Thus far, three developments have been evaluated and are ready for awards. The qualifying contractors will be expected to build five to 10 no-frills basic two-bedroom houses at a fixed rate of $500,000 or less on service lots provided by the government. This initiative, ladies and gentlemen, is a capture and to provide contracts for small contractors. It's an initiative that is welcomed and, in fact, was very much oversubscribed by the contractors within Trinidad and Tobago. It allows for the small contractors to be given small packages, maybe one, probably two units, depending on their quality of work. And it's allowed them to earn some measures of income while, at the same time, providing low, reasonably cost houses for the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. Because we realize in the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development, and, in fact, AZC in particular, that... Presently, some of the cost of our units does not really sit or will be able to accommodate our very low-income persons. And so the, this initiative in particular is addressed to, to, to suit these issues, whereby the house will be less than $500,000. We range between two hundred and fifty dollars to $500,000, which is affordable to the low-income persons in our society. Another great initiative by this government, executed by the AGC. The AGC in this exercise will ensure the contractors are here to the highest and best quality construction demands in accordance with its 22-point certification quality management program. One of the priority objectives of this administration regarding the state housing program is to provide quality, affordable housing solutions to deserving applicants on the ministry's database. To ensure that our available housing stock is distributed in an equitable and efficient manner, the ministry, in conjunction with EGC, plans to conduct modified random selection draws in the coming weeks in order to distribute approximately 11, oh, wrong, 1,100 housing units to qualifying applicants in the Ministry of Housing Database. What that means is that there will be random draws so that within this random draws, people will be selected to receive their packages. And we hope to do that very successfully, which is one of the mandates of the agency. We conduct these random draws ever so often from the pool of almost 180,000 people on our database. And our goal is to ensure that every deserving low to lower mid middle income family has the opportunity to lead decent, dignified, and rewarding lives, regardless of the locality or position in society. As Minister of Housing and Urban Development, I am proud of the work of this ministry and its agencies, because they have been able to accomplish in the last five years quite a lot and its contribution to the national development despite the many challenges encountered. The housing program, by its very nature, touches every facet of human development. And because of that, we at the ministry hold to the premise that any investment made in the housing sector, now and in the future, is a direct investment in our citizens. We at the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development, together with our agencies, will do our part to ensure that affordable shelter options are a vital part of that equation. 
because we know how much that matters to you, our potential beneficiaries. I wish to congratulate today's recipients, those present with us, and those who will collect their agreements at a later date. I want you to take a moment and appreciate what you have been given, as it will change your life and that of your family forever. I also want to remind you of the public housing program to honor your financial commitments to the HDC and to the TTMF, so that HDC can continue to provide even more housing units for our deserving families. It is also important that you take an active role in positively shaping your new development, your new communities, and the people who are moving into Lakeview, the mayor mentioned it a while ago, but I also always boast about Lakeview as one of the developments that has stood apart from others. Because they have developed a certain kind of community bond that I haven't seen across most of the other developments. Lakeview is a very active community, spearheaded by a very good community council. They participate in almost all activities throughout the year. Whether it is Christmas, whether it is Easter, whether it is Eid, whether it is Diwali, whether it is Emancipation Day, Sports and Family Days, there are always some kind of activities in the Lakeview community. Within recent times, I have seen the Lakeview community go out into the fields, given the COVID situation, preparing meals for those who are in need, collecting packages from the individual home homeowners, and going out and preparing meals for those deserving, not only in Lakeview, but throughout the community. So I want those who are entering the Lakeview community, don't just enter and move into your new homes and so on, but be part and parcel of that community. Contribute to its development, contribute to its activities, because at the end of the day, you all must be able to make Lakeview one of the best developments, second to none in Trinidad and Tobago. So I congratulate you all. And so in closing, I would like to thank the Permanent Secretary, the Chairman, the Board, and the management of the AGC and the hardworking teams, the contractors, of course, the service providers who are instrumental in making these occasions possible. As we go forward into our new homes, as we go forward into newer communities, let us ensure that we make those houses our homes for the benefit of our family, for the benefit of our community. Do not be in isolation. Do not say you have nothing to do with others around you, because at the end of the day, the strength of the community depends on everyone working together for the benefit of all. So once again, congratulations to all the recipients. Congratulations and thanks to the AGC. Thanks to the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development. Thanks to the contractors. And thanks to all those who participated in making this event a success. The government will continue to provide houses for our citizens, continue to provide amenities. And the AGC to the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development will continue to execute as appropriate. May God continue to bless us all and bless our nation. I thank you very much. So as we thank the Honorable Minister and our recipients uh, get ready to come into the space to receive their packages, just like to reiterate some of what the Minister would have said in terms of some of the good things happening in the housing sector. We have uh, 1,100 distributions to do over the next few months. Uh, over 3,000 uh, homes were allocated over the past few years. And then we made great strides with our PPP and our small and medium contractors housing initiatives. So ladies and gentlemen, good things are happening positive things are happening. And as we begin with the distributions, as we indicated earlier, we have some at our San Fernando office who will be collecting there. They were given schedules to arrive at staggered times and we have those who are here to receive. So, and of course, this is all to ensure that we adhere to and follow the guidelines by the government and the Ministry of Health. So I now invite our permanent secretary, Ms. Simone Thorne Mora. She will actually do the first distribution and then we move on with his worship with our managing director his worship and then the honorable minister so i again we're small in numbers but let's warmly welcome our permanent secretary please i now call on miss bedo Other side. Thank you. Thank you, Permanent Secretary and Ms. Bedo. Congratulations to you. 
I now call on our managing director, Mr. Brent Lyons, who is a resident, former resident of this borough. And, you know, he's very proud to say that every time. So we have uh, Mr. Lyons presenting to Mr. Andy Edwards. Managing director on the other side. Yeah. So if you could come forward, come back a bit. Great. And next we have Mr. Lewis. Mr. Lyons, thank you for your assistance this morning. And we now call on His Worship to do two presentations, please. And His Worship will be presenting packages to uh, Mr. Francis and Mr. James. First, we have Mr. Francis up. And next we have Mr. James. Your Worship, thank you very much for your assistance. Congratulations to both gentlemen. And we now call on the Honorable Minister and MP for this area, the Honorable Major General Retired Edmund Dillon, he will distribute first to Miss Stanislaw. We now have Mr. Nimchan, who will receive his package from the Honorable Minister. Mr. R. Razi. And last but by no means least, we have Mr. Stanley. And we thank the Honorable Minister for assisting with the distributions. And as we wrap up this morning's ceremony, as we had indicated, this is an abridged uh, ceremony. We have cut it down considerably in terms of activities and number of distributions, only to ensure that we um, move forward in the best possible way regarding this new normal. So it, as, we sa as I said, it also encourages the HEC to revisit, revise, improve its external activities to ensure that we adhere to all health and safety practices. So we congratulate all those who received uh, their packages for Lakeview and Hubertstown. Congratulations. We hope you will become the model HEC citizens that we hope that we know you can become and we thank all for adhering to our physical distancing practices wearing masks and the sanitizing that we mandated that you do on entering so ladies and gentlemen as we uh, end this morning's uh, ceremony I thank you for joining us and for those who were on social media I thank you also for joining us there and we look forward to your participation or your viewing other ceremonies and activities that we will have virtually. Thank you very much.